Well, hello, pre-calc guys. Uh, here we go. We're going to start uh, the next uh, part of trig identities. We're going to go back over these. Uh, this uh, is a little bit more work. He looks kind of funny. But if you get used to this, get used to seeing these identities, um, it'll be a lot easier for you in the future. So uh, I don't make you memorize them, but you should have a good idea. Like. You already know these. We've talked about these, right? This reciprocal identities. Um, it's really, really, really important to understand Pythagorean identities, just because, you know, you learned a little bit about this uh, earlier on uh, when you were talking about uh, triangles and such. But here we are. We're going to use these uh, quite a bit, and then we'll talk a little bit about the co-functions and, and it's real simple it's a simple idea of you know the sine and cosine when remember when you were looking at those waves you could see that sine and cosine were shifted pi over two that's it pi over two radians so let's go ahead and just um, simplify using our reciprocal and Pythagorean identities and usually it's a good idea just to go ahead and see if we could you know get these things in terms of just sine and cosine and this one's going to be pretty easy and um, you'll have to remember that tan you know you have to remember that tangent equals sine over cosine but we've talked about that quite a bit so let's start writing this out and change both tangent and cotangent into sine and cosine functions uh, sine and cosine all right, so it starts with cosine, uh, cosine x, and inside here we're going to have tangent, which, which is sine x over cosine x. Uh, sorry about that. And then we have cotangent, which is the reciprocal of this, so it's going to be cosine x over sine x. All right, and then I'm going to, we can't really add, we can't do this addition until we have like denominators. So I have to multiply to get like denominators, but I can only multiply by a factor of one, right? I can't change this in any way. So this side I'm going to multiply by sine x over sine x, and this side I'm going to multiply by cosine x over cosine x. And when I do that, when I do that math, I still have cosine on the outside. And then I have some addition on the top. And I have cosine x times sine x as a denominator. What I end up with is sine x times sine x is sine squared x. And then cosine squared x. Sorry about that C. Woo, ugly. All right, and if we look up top, we see that this Pythagorean identity shows that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is just 1. So I'm left with cosine x times the quantity 1 over, uh, really, that's what I'm doing today, 1 over, sorry about that, cosine x sine x we are so close to being finished and now look we can just uh, cancel look at that 1 over sine x well we know that what is it up there 1 over sine x that's cosecant all right 1 over sine x now we're almost done. We just say, hey man, that equals cosecant. So not so bad. It's this is not one of those super long problems that you're gonna have to do tons and tons and tons of work with, but <clears throat> um it does tend to uh get to be more difficult. And there are other things that that tend to 
to take a little bit longer. But this is it. Uh, let me erase this. Then we can move on to the next one. Get rid of that one. And open up that one. Uh, so sine x plus cosine times cotangent. All right. Let's see what we've got here. We say sine x plus cosine x times cosine cosine over sine. You know, so now I've put this in terms of of sine and cosine. So I can multiply these together and and then create a denominator here. It's, it's going to be basically the same thing. So I'm going to put this in parentheses so I know that I'm going to be putting those together. That's that multiplication. So right now I have sine x plus cosine squared. That was cosine times cosine. Cosine squared x over sine x, right? But I need a denominator here. I can't add these two things here. So I'm going to multiply this by sine over sine, right? That's how we do it. Um, so multiply here, I get sine squared x over sine x, because we're going to do the addition, uh, plus cosine squared x. Well, oh, look at that. We did it again. We know what that is. It's up here. We just did this. So that equals 1 over sine x. Hey, it turned out to be the exact same answer as before. 1 over sine x, which is go seek it. All right, well, we got that done. Interesting. Get rid of that. We'll move on to the next one. Hope we have something different with the next one. Guess I should have checked before I did this. Ah, yeah, this will be different. Uh... So let's let's start changing this stuff around, right? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, what do we got? This is, if I'm not mistaken, uh, secant is. Oh gosh, I'm not even on the right page. Secant is one over cosine x right minus sine over cosine x right all right so 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 far yay and then over here cosecant is one over sine x plus 1. Let's see, if I, let's see if I can make this work. Well, these two things I can put together. These I already, these already have, right? I can subtract these two things. So 1 minus sine, 1 minus sine x over cosine. Right. 
And then over here, I'm going to have, I can't really add these, these things together until I have like denominators and really and truly it just becomes, uh, uh, one plus one, one plus sine X hmm, over sine X. And that's because I had to multiply this by sine over sine to get like denominators to put them together. Okay. And now we're sort of ready to multiply these two things, right? Um, on top, we have a, a difference, what we, what we call a difference of squares when we FOIL. So we take the squares of each. There's no middle term, right? So we would have 1 minus sine squared x um, all over sine times cosine excellent and then the, the there's an identity that says and it's identities that we have from before um, one minus sine x is equal to cosine x um, because this is tangent right so if you think about it, or, or sine squared x plus cosine x, cosine squared x equals 1. Therefore, if you move things around and you want to solve for cosine, you say that um, 1 minus sine squared x equals cosine squared x. So I hope you understand that idea. Ooh. All over sine times cosine. Well, cancel one of these out with one of those, and I have cosine over sine, which is cotangent x. Go cotangent. We finally got something different. And last, but certainly not least. Are you getting tired of this already? So the last one is going to be difficult. Is it difficult? No, it's just using different identities. Um, these are co-function identities, so we know. Give you, it's pretty simple here, right? So, da, 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 da. just thinking ahead. All right. Cosine times pi over 2 minus x. What do we see? Cosine sine, uh, pi over 2 minus x, or theta, becomes sine. So, let's go ahead. Let's call it. Sine x over cosecant, which is 1 over sine x. I will show you what that looks like. Plus cosine squared x. Well, that looks horrible, doesn't it? This looks so horrible, and it's so super simple. I didn't even think about that. All right. Well, this this cosecant here, just a reciprocal. We basically throw this sine up to the top and multiply. Um, and what happens is we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Well, hey, guys. We already started this. We already did this three times. All right. So the final answer to this one is one. That one was super simple. Huh. So if I go over here, 
that's the last one. I guess I didn't give you any more. I should do more for you. I'll give you a lot of homework instead. All right, that's it. Good luck today.